Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, May 14th, 2020. The thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult your local weather office and the National Hurricane Center. We're getting the hurricane season started a bit early this year, but in the month of May, uh, we do sometimes get disturbances that can be tropical-like in nature before the official start of the hurricane season on June 1st. We do have one such disturbance currently forming in the Florida Straits, where a uh, baroclinic storm at the moment is beginning to form, but could acquire tropical characteristics on its way northeastward during the coming days. And this is being instigated uh, currently by an upper level trough kind of moving across the Gulf of Mexico. On water vapor imagery here, you'll see a broad curvature to the flow in the upper level cirrus, indicating a trough that is progressing eastward and helping to instigate some convection north of Cuba and throughout the Bahamas. And the other thing that's uh, going on here is uh, the presence of a large baroclinic zone just to the north of Cuba. You can kind of see the demarcation between two different air masses here in the Atlantic, this northeast flow uh, indicating uh, a cool dry air mass to the north and then an east-southeast flow to the south of that indicating a more moist tropical air mass. And this is, for uh, all intents and purposes, just a front here draped across the Bahamas and perhaps extending down toward the Florida Straits. And this thermal gradient is allowing some of this moist air to start moving northward and up and over the cooler air, thereby lifting it and causing some of these clouds to form and some of this rainfall to occur. And as all this rainfall breaks out, that's allowing pressures to start to fall uh, as heat is released uh, by the convection in this region, which is going to cause eventually the development of a large scale uh, circulation near or north of the northern Bahamas sometime during the next couple of days. Now we're already seeing some uh, development of a surface trough in the Florida Straits as areas of convection south of Key West have been particularly intense today. If we take a closer zoomed in look, we'll see that we've had a clump of thunderstorms south of the Keys and we have seen some rain spreading through the Keys this afternoon. And there is a lot of shear here, but there has been a little bit of a spin up of some mid-level rotation within these thunderstorms. It's not really uh, down to the surface just yet, but we can see some semblance of a surface trough with northeast wind to the south of the Keys. And then over Cuba, you see some south-southwest flow in the low level clouds. And all indications are that the flow north of Cuba remains out of the east here. So there's a little bit of a kinked surface trough through this area, and that's going to continue toward the northeast tonight and tomorrow. Given the shear, um, the thunderstorms may get sheared off and we may see a reformation of this little vortex over toward the northeast later tomorrow morning. And exactly where that occurs is a little uncertain, and uh, we'll find out tomorrow where this decides to start consolidating. Uh, this is the Key West radar showing that rain starting to spread up into the Keys and extreme southern Florida. This will eventually, over the next day or two, make its way farther north uh, into the Miami area and farther up the Florida coastline. Not super far north up the peninsula, though, as much of this rain will remain east of Florida. Uh, we see down to the south some of this convection just north of Cuba showing some semblance of rotation. Again, this is at the mid-levels, uh, not the surface, uh, but this is an indication of that. Uh, that uh, heating going on with this convection, allowing a circulation to begin forming at least in the mid-levels and eventually uh, in a couple days work its way down to the surface. Now, the way the GFS handles this situation uh, is showing this little circulation trying to form south of Key West, but then you see this broader envelope of cyclonic flow around this smaller scale circulation. And this is reflecting the fact that, again, we have a very large frontal zone through the Bahamas, and so this entire region is starting to experience synoptic scale forcing for lift and pressure falls. And so we're going to see uh, here on the model for tomorrow morning, Friday morning, this broad area of cyclonic flow beginning to develop. Now within that, we could have convective scale perturbations such as the one we've seen south of Key West today. Small scale circulations, you can see the semblance of a second one tomorrow morning trying to form near Andros Island instead. Which one of these becomes the dominant center of circulation uh, and becomes the center of the entire system remains to be seen, and some of this is down to convective randomness, and we'll have to see tomorrow how it looks. Now, 
once we go forward in time to Saturday morning, we'll see that the entire thing has moved north and is now located east of Florida on the model. And you see this string of color moving out to the northeast. This is the low level vorticity or spin, and it's really showing where the flow switches sharply from southwest to easterly. And this is that warm front. So if you have a low here, you have a front extending to the northeast away from that. And this is a warm front where warm air is surging northward. And at this point, the system is still non-tropical. This is not a tropical storm at this point, but what can eventually happen is this warm air surging northward can start to wrap around the cyclone and form a secluded bubble of warm moist air near the center. And at that point, we may be able to see this start acquiring some tropical characteristics. We can see this happen in the moisture field on the GFS, where Saturday morning uh, we can see that a lot of the warm air is surging northward and it's starting to wrap around into a little bit of a moist bubble near the center of circulation east of Florida. And if we go to the upper level flow, we see that the storm is also located underneath the axis of this upper level trough, which is now directly over top of the surface low. And this pocket of white here indicates very light flow aloft, which in turn indicates low wind shear, which is the other thing that could allow convection to start congealing around the center of the surface low and potentially allow this to transi transition to a more subtropical type of storm. As the storm continues moving north from this point, on Sunday afternoon, we can see again this moist pocket kind of wrapping up around the storm center. We still kind of have a warm front here, but it's beginning to get a little bit more detached from this low, which on the GFS continues to deepen to some extent, actually. And by the time it ends up east of Cape Hatteras, we have what could be a fully tropical system on this model. You can again see the moisture pocket wrapping around. This is literally an occluding a cyclone that is acquiring tropical characteristics on its way northward due to the convection around the center. Now, there is some variation in the model forecasts for how this goes. The European model, for instance, showing again 850 millibar vorticity in color here, for Saturday morning has the low in roughly the same place, and again you can see the extension of color to the east indicating the warm front. Uh, now the European does eventually seclude this off. You see this wrapping up. The old warm front is to the north and eventually kind of detaches from this. But unlike the GFS, this remains weaker and broader as it moves northeastward to the east of Cape Hatteras. And it's hard to tell exactly why this is the case, but one p potential region, potential reason may be a difference in large-scale instability between the two models. The water does get cooler as the storm moves north. So while the water east of Florida and in the Bahamas is rather warm, it does get a few degrees Celsius colder once you get to the southeast of Cape Hatteras. Now we do have the Gulf Stream in here, which is slightly warmer, but if it's on the cool side of the Gulf Stream, far enough to the east, the water does get cooler. And the question becomes whether that's able to, to support enough thunderstorm activity to make the storm tropical and allow it to continue intensifying. Now on the GFS, a vortex sounding at this time when it's southeast of Cape Hatteras seems to suggest that water as cold as about 20 to 23 degrees Celsius may still be enough to generate a thermal profile that is still supportive of deep convection. And if that's the case, then this might be kind of on the edge here when the storm is moving to this region. And I don't have access to European sounding data, uh, but it may be that the model is a little more stable up here. Uh, We'll have to find out which one of those tends to be more correct once we actually have a circulation that's formed. It will also depend a lot on just how tight the circulation is. A broad and loose circulation will be less able to take advantage of ocean fluxes that can promote more thunderstorm activity. So a smaller vortex like the GFS has may be better able to take advantage of this fact compared to the European run. We won't know much of these details until the storm has actually wrapped up east of Florida and we have a circulation to track. As of this time, we don't really have a low yet. We just have a broad mess uh, north of Cuba. So as usual, before these things form, there's a lot of questions until we know where they form and uh, how they look. Uh, after they begin organizing. As far as impacts, we're going to see a lot of rain in the Bahamas from this, along with gusty winds, potentially 30 to 50 miles per hour at times. And we may also get gusty winds along the Florida coastline, though probably not too far inland. And we're also going to see some heavy rain that could spread over South Florida, but again, not very far north and not very far inland. And there may be a strong rainfall gradient, but a few inches are possible in local spots. This is the current WPC outlook showing that swath of rain that you can see has a sharp edge over 
over the southern Florida peninsula, and so amounts will vary heavily in here, but the closer you are to the coast, the more likely you are to see heavy rain here. And that's uh, going to be about the extent of the impacts to the U.S. for this one. Again, the storm is expected to move to the northeast, well east of Cape Hatteras. If the storm is stronger, as the GFS suggests, then we may be seeing some swells on the beaches of North Carolina and potentially a band of rain or two, uh, but this will be easily steered east of the mainland on its way out of the Bahamas. So no concerns really about a direct landfall uh, anywhere along the eastern seaboard with this one. So that's about it for now on this one. Again, a broad mess at the moment, bringing a broad area of heavy rain to the Bahamas and Florida. Uh, will eventually organize over the next couple of days as it moves northeast and could bring gusty winds and heavy rain to the northern Bahamas and southeastern Florida. Not expected to be a direct impact to the rest of the eastern seaboard uh, and could acquire the name Arthur at some point on its journey northward if it acquires enough tropical characteristics to earn that title. Either way, an early start to the 2020 hurricane season, and we'll continue updating you as this develops over the next few days. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.